Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro video editing tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at this cool split screen effect. You can see how it's just animating on screen just like that and it can go all the way to a quad screen. Really technically you could take it as far as you want, but today we're just going to talk about doing a horizontal split screen and then a vertical split screen. So we'll end up going two videos, three videos, and then a fourth video all together, just like you just saw in that little example that I played for you right then and right there so beautifully, so wonderfully, and all kinds of amazing things like that. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial and you don't want to miss any Premiere Pro or video editing tutorials in the future, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, it'll just make sure that you always are in touch and you can see all the video editing, After Effects, you know, all the good stuff that we're doing here. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into this tutorial and check this thing out. All right, so here we are in Premiere Pro, and I'm going to begin, I have four different video clips here. You can use, obviously, any video clips you like. I'm going to right-click on my first clip and just choose New Sequence from Clip. I'm going to do that. It's going to make a new sequence, but you can see here it names the sequence the same as the video clip. So I'm just going to select that, and I'm going to name this Quad Split because we're going to end up splitting the screen into four to display all four video clips at the same time and animating all of that good stuff. So what we'll do is we'll move about two seconds in on the clip right here. In fact, I can just type out 200 in my time code. Moves me right to two seconds. And I'm going to drag the sunset over the bay boat clip into play. Now, just to kind of line things up, it technically isn't a good thing to do because we're stretching the video clip out. But I'm going to grab my rate stretch tool here. You can see the hotkey is the letter R. The rate stretch tool. I'm going to grab the end of that sunset over bay boat clip. And I'm just going to pull it out just to make it as long as my other clip. You can see it slowed the clip down. 67.18% of the original 100% speed. I'm just doing it because I want to do it for this video. So what we now want to do is hide this video clip, not actually shut it off like I'm doing here, but we need to slide it off of our video frame way off to the right. So I'm going to select that clip and up here under position, I'm going to just hover over like the number 960 and I can click and drag and I'm going to drag it. You can see we're dragging it right off. In fact, I know that 2880 is going to be just the perfect X position for our clip. You can see it's completely gone. Something else we're going to do here is we're going to add an effect to this sunset over bay MOV clip. That's going to be here in the effects panel. I'm going to run a search for the crop effect. You can see video effects transform crop. I'm going to drag it. I can drag it and straight up drop it on the clip or just drop it up here in the effect controls panel. And now what I want to do is work on the animation. So I'm going to drop a keyframe for both the position. Remember we adjusted the X. So I'm going to click on this little stopwatch. You can see it says toggle animation. But what it really is doing here is dropping a keyframe, which is toggling the animation. But it's dropping a keyframe. We're also going to toggle the animation for the left parameter within that crop effect that we just dropped, just like that. Now what I want to do is move 20 frames downstream, so down the timeline. I'm going to hold down Shift and tap my right arrow key one, two, three, four times. We're 20 frames ahead. And I want to begin moving the X position of this overall clip back into frame. But I need to know kind of where the middle of the frame is. What we're going to do in order to get an idea of where the middle is, is we're going to hit our settings wrench over here on the monitor. And I'm going to come down here and turn on safe margins. You're going to see it's going to give me these boxes, but I have these little tick marks, right? There is the uh, horizontal center, right on those two tick marks. So what I'll do is I'll begin sliding this back. I'll slide it back, slide it back. Kind of like that. Maybe I'll take it a little further because what I want to see, you can see we're obviously we're going way past those tick marks, but I know that our mask is going to trim this video at the tick marks. I want to be able to see the boats and the little dock. So I'm going to keep dragging this back until it's kind of lined up, you know, sort of where I think it needs to be in order to see the boats and things that I want to see. So I'll take it to right about there. I've got it, let's say at 1320 uh, for this particular video clip. That works perfectly. So now what we've got is an animation. If I take it back to the beginning of the clip, you can see how Premiere created a second keyframe. Boom, we've got an animation. Now, it's a little it's a little too much because it goes too far, but what we now need to do is animate where the cropping takes place. So what I'm going to do is I need to make sure this animation playhead right here is aligned perfectly with this last keyframe. So the X position moves while the crop crops, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm going to hit this go to previous keyframe button. It's going to align me with that keyframe. And now with left, I'm just going to begin trimming it in. So I can, you can see I can just move it right along. And I can say, you know, uh, maybe right about there is right. Whoop, that's too much. Let's try to drop it to 30. And maybe 30 is about where it needs to be. Or 29 takes it too far. You know what, actually 31. 31 does look pretty good. It's not quite exactly on the center, though. So this is where, in order to get this exactly right, we would just tweak the positioning a little bit. So maybe move it up a little bit just to nudge that over. And you can see, yep, that looks like it's just about perfect. Um, it's certainly close enough. Maybe we'll take it one more, 1325, and that should be good. So let's play through this and check this out. Look at what this looks like. So as we do this, 
That second video clip is going to appear and be trimmed, and now we have a split screen. Obviously, the problem now is that underlying video, we can't see the girl jogging any longer. So as this video clip is sliding into place, we also need to animate the underlying clip. So here's how we're going to do that. Once more, select that Sunset Over Bay video clip, because we need all this to work together at the same time. So we need to be perfectly aligned with that first keyframe. So hit the Go to Previous Keyframe button once. That's not the keyframe we want. One more time, that's the keyframe we want. So now that we have our playhead exactly in the right position, select that bottom video clip, and we're going to drop a position a keyframe. So we're going to toggle the animation for position. Now we're animating the bottom video clip, woman running.mov. We're going to move 20 frames downstream. One, uh, shift, hold down the, uh, sh hold down shift, excuse me, and press the right arrow key one time, two times, three times, four times. And then here, we're just going to adjust the X position of this underlying clip of this woman. So just hover over the 960 and drag her over. Maybe we'll drag her over to about right there. So now what's going to happen is these clips are going to move in unison, just like that. You can see how they just beautifully move together. If I play through that, it's normal, and then there comes the split screen. Great. So now what we want to do is grab both of these video clips and slide them upward and force a third big video clip down in the bottom half of this. How are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select both of these video clips, right click and choose to nest them. So we're going to nest them and I'm going to call this 2x split or something like that. Just so I know that this sequence here, it's the two by video split that we just created. I want to take a quick break here from this tutorial. If you're not following me over on Instagram, go check out my Instagram at tutvid. It's always a good place where you can either tag me in an image or a video or whatever, something you've created using one of my tutorials. I also do a lot of live streaming over there on Instagram and just generally, you know, it's a good time. Uh, my Instagram handle again is at tutvid. I'll see you over there. Let's get back into the tutorial. What I want to do now is move move a little past where this animation ends. So the animation ends like right about there at around the three second mark. Let's move to like three seconds beyond this. So let's go to like the six second mark right there. And we will drag in this archway runner. So this the clip of this girl running up this, this set of steps through this archway is pretty cool. I'm going to just trim it to be about as long as the rest of our video clips here. Now what I want this to do is I want this video clip to animate up from the bottom. And then we will trim off the top to make sure that it is, you know, just meeting right at the, the halfway point across this video. And that might not make a lot of sense, but just watch how we do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the archway runner clip. And we're going to drop a keyframe to begin animating the position. Now instead of animating the X, the side to side, we're going to animate the Y. This is the up down. I'm going to push this further ahead. So as I make this number bigger from 540, you're going to see it's going to push the video downward. Because of course we want the video to begin off screen right there. Now we're going to animate this over 20 frames as we've done everything else. So hold down shift, tap the right arrow key, one, two, three, four times. And now what we're going to do is we're going to m reduce this number. At 1623, we need to reduce it a bit. The interesting thing about this, remember, we haven't added our crop effect yet. We're going to move this back, and I want to just compose the shot the way I want it to be. See, I know I can trim all this stuff on the top off. I want to see this bit because I want to make sure I can see the girl jogging. Remember, if this whole top half of the video is gone, we're just going to see this little bit here. So I want to make sure that the girl is running through the frame in the proper place because now what we'll do, we'll go back to effects, we'll add our crop effect, We'll go back to the beginning of the clip by using that go to previous keyframe, right? And this time we're going to try cropping the top, right? Let's try cropping the top. And now we'll move downstream 20 frames, shift in the right arrow key, one, two, three, four times. And now we'll simply crop the top of this video clip off until it meets up with that halfway mark just about perfectly. See, it's close to being perfect. And we'll adjust these last couple pixels by simply using the Y positioning. So we'll reduce that to about 682. And you can see now it lines up just so beautifully. So now when this animation happens, the video is being cropped as it's moving into place. And we just have this video that moves perfectly. Now, of course, our top video is being cut off. So we need to slide that upward with this. And we're going to do that the same way we just did it uh, to the video, the, the two videos here in the 2X split. So we'll grab that nested clip because now we can animate both of them in unison because it's one big nested clip. We're going to go ahead and toggle animation for position, hold down shift, tap the right arrow key one, two, three, four times to move 20 frames downstream. And we're simply going to slide our Y positioning back, kind of like that. And now you'll see the whole thing is going to animate in unison just like that to display all three clips. Now let's move around the 10 second mark here. So I'm just going to punch in 1000 and we're going to drop in our last video clip. So it's going to be this airplane sitting there. And what I'll do is I'll trim the edge of this airplane clip to just meet up with the end of the rest of our video. And first and foremost, I'm going to scale this video down. So let's come over here to the scaling, right? We've got scaling over here in effect controls. I'm going to scale it down to like 67%. Just make it a bit smaller. 
And what I think I'll do here is go ahead and begin moving the position. So I'm going to move it over first. I just want to make sure I get the plane kind of uh, composed because the plane is going to appear in this bottom right corner. So we can see between this little tick mark here and this tick mark up here, the plane would sit in there kind of nicely. So that's right where I want the plane to be. Uh, now what we want to do is animate this thing from the far right into this position. But it's in the position where we want it to be right now. So let's kind of animate this backward. We're here at the beginning of the plane in Bay movie clip. Let's, before we toggle any animation, we're gonna move 20 frames downstream. So hold down shift, tap the right arrow key one, two, three, four times. And right here is where I will drop a position keyframe to begin with. I'll slide all the way back to the beginning. And then here, I'll hover over the X parameter, and I'll just slide that video clip all the way off to the right, just like that. So right now, the animation we have is that plane sliding right into place. Bam. The problem is, obviously, we need to crop both the left side and the top. Now, I need to be careful here because we accidentally selected this 2x split when the playhead rolled off of our plane in bay clip. So we want to make sure we have plane in bay selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a crop effect to this uh, clip. So I'm going to drag crop. I'm going to drop it out on that clip. There it is. And let's um, let's move back to the beginning of the clip. Well, we actually don't need to do that because we're going to trim the top. We're not going to animate the top at all. So I'm just going to bump this number up. Maybe to about four, that looks pretty good. I'll make sure I select that clip. I want to really zoom in, so I'm going to grab my zooming options here. I'm going to go to like 400%, and I want to take a very close look at where the blue of the sky meets up with the clip next to it. And you can see it's about one pixel too tall. It's just off. So let's select this plane clip, and let's nudge uh, this to about eight, yeah, about 874. We nudged it one pixel, and that, yep, that's about right. 874, I think, is right for us. All right, great. So now that we've done that, let's zoom this back out. We're going to go ahead and we're going to animate this plane left to right, and then we're going to figure out where the crop is going to fall. So I'm going to select the plane clip. I'm going to move back to the first frame of that plane clip by hitting the up arrow key. Well, why didn't that work? Well, here's why. Because we don't have the tracks activated. So let's activate the V3 track. Let's go back to here, hit the up arrow key. Now you can see it drops back to the first frame of that clip. Great. We're going to make sure we select that clip. And what I'm going to do is we're going to, we're going to reverse animate a little bit here. So we're going to move 20 frames downstream because this is the final finished position of our clip. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to hit the right arrow key one, two, three, four times, and I'm going to drop a keyframe by an, uh, animating or toggling the animation over here. Activating, I should have said activating the animation. I'm going to click that. We're going to move all the way back to the beginning, and what we're going to do here is just hover over our X parameter and just drag it until basically it's disappeared off screen. Great. So if I play through this, you can see, bam, the plane slides on. Obvious problem is we still need to trim that left crop. That's fine because we're going to do that right now. Hit the up arrow key again to go to the beginning of the plane clip. This automatically is going to make sure we're aligned with that very first keyframe, right? What we're going to do from here is we're going to begin animating the left crop. So I'm going to toggle the animation to drop a keyframe, and then I'm going to move to the second keyframe. So I'm going to hit this little go to next keyframe button. You can see there we are. We're exactly where the plane ends. And I'm just going to begin moving, uh, tapping the up arrow key here after I've, I've activated sort of the left crop. I'm going to use the up arrow key one, two, three, four, five, six, a bunch of times here until I get close to that mark. You see that? See, I'm very, very close to the mark, but I'm not quite perfect. And surely I'm not lined up with where I should be. So how do I make it perfect? Well, once more, we're going to zoom in on this. We're going to go to like 400%. And what we're going to do is we're adjusting now the final resting place of the X position. So what I need to do is reduce the X position to right about there. And you can see perfectly lined up with all the videos. So let's now go back and set this to fit so we can see everything. And let's just play through that real quick, make sure it doesn't look wonky or anything. So I'm going to play through that. Whoop, I have it rendering out full. I'm going to set this back to a quarter. Let's try that again. And that looks pretty good. So now at this point, you can see the effect we get is the woman jogging. She's jogging. In comes the second clip. Then everything's going to slide up and introduce a third clip. That's great. And then everything's going to slide over and introduce the last clip, except it doesn't slide over. If we want to move this clip underneath, we absolutely can do that. So we can select the archway runner clip. And we can hit the up arrow key. That's going to move us back to the beginning of the plane in bay clip because that is the, that's where the animation begins. And what I'll do is I'll once again animate the position of this. Now you can see we've already activated the animation. So how do we animate further? Well, instead of hitting the stopwatch, just hit the add new keyframe button here. So add new keyframe, hold down shift, tap the right arrow key one, two, three, four times, just like that. And then we can just mess around with our X positioning, maybe center her up in the frame just a little bit better like that. And you can see now when the plane comes in, boom, everything slides right into place beautifully as it should be. Now, in addition to this technique, one of the cool things you can do once you have all your animation set is you can kind of do this once and then just add different footage. So like plane in bay here, 
I can, let's say I want to replace it with the woman running, okay, this is the video clip I have, woman running right here. So I'm going to select that in my project bin, just like that, and I can right click on plane and bay, and just choose, look, replace with clip from bin, and it's going to take that clip of the woman, place her right in there, and you're going to see all the animation carries right over. So it's very, very easy to just swap clips in and out once you've created your animation. It's a great little trick if you decide you want to create this kind of effect, but you don't want to reanimate every single time. Well, build one sequence, have your animation ready to go. You can copy the clips right out of here over into your main working project or nest all the clips together, whatever you want to do. It's very, very easy. And obviously swap out whatever video clips you like. The other thing is, I have these three PNG files. There's going to be a download link for them in the description. They are relatively simple, but they are in 4K resolution, and this is not 4K video, but if you want to do just quick and dirty uh, four up or four across video, what you could do is you could drag one of these graphics in and just drag it over your video, and you can see what this is is just this thick, heavy border. Now, this is this the graphic is 4K resolution, so if I zoom way out here, like set this to 25% or something, and I hit this little transform on option, you can see that the graphic is way bigger. You can quickly scale it to the size of your frame. Well, let's set this back to fit. You can scale it to the size of your frame by right-clicking on the graphic and just choose scale to frame size. It's going to scale it down, make those black lines a little thinner, kind of the way they should be. Uh, we can also just hide our safe margins for a quick second. And you can see you've got uh, a quick, quickly divide your video up into just these quadrants. The reason that can be useful is because maybe you don't want to do all this elaborate animation. You just want to do a four across video. Drop this graphic on top and then just scale your video down. So let's say I take, uh, well, you need, your, you need your graphic to be on top of everything. So let's drag the graphic up a little bit. Let's take like the sunset bay a shot here. And we could say, all right, we want this to be in this bottom corner. Well, what I can do is I can just scale this down maybe to about like that, and then I can just click on this icon right here next to motion, and I can click and drag it right into place. I can just drag it right into place, and just make sure that it ends underneath that black border, and it's going to look perfect. Now this could really be scaled down a little bit more, and then we could slide this over. You could say, all right, right about there is maybe right. Maybe we'll go to like 52 on the size department. So we can just slide this over, and then, I mean, I think you're getting the point, right? You slide it up. And voila, the video for your the, the bottom corner of your quadrant is done that quick and easy. Now, there'd be no animation to it, but hey, it's still a solution, and a solution is a good thing. So I'm going to delete these two tracks real quick. The other graphics that I have are a horizontal split. So here you'll see, I'm just going to stretch this out. I'm going to move over this. This is just that horizontal line going across. It's very thick. If you want to make it thinner and you're not using 4K footage, right-click and choose Scale to Frame Size. You can see it just scales it down properly. And of course, the last is just, you know, you probably guessed, the vertical split. And you can see what that is right there. Just a nice vertical split that runs down. And once more, like everything else, you can right-click and scale it down to the frame size and have yourself a nice little split, uh, and multiple splits, the four-up split or the side-by-side -side or up-down split, whatever you like. And of course, on top of everything else, don't forget that little replace footage tip or trick. It's so stinking helpful. It's so useful. Uh, guys, for creating multiple screen, four up, quad split screens, or side by side, whether it's a horizontal split, or I'm sorry, a horizontal split or a vertical split, you name it, we've covered it here in this tutorial, and you got a free graphic download out of it. So, for working with split screen stuff in Premiere Pro and masking and animating those masks and animating other stuff and a nested clip and all kinds of other stuff that we covered right here, right now, as we do every other day, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.